Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome, welcome to another broadcast of perfecting our relationship with our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every time I just think about just the thought of the Lord, just the thought of Jesus, just send chills up and down my spine, throughout my body. And I hope it does the same for you. Um, Mm-mm-mm. Today we're gonna today we're gonna talk about the season, the reason for this season, Christmas, the reason for this, the reason for the season, because Jesus God does not want us to forget why and what we're celebrating in this season. And it is, yes, it is a joyous occasion. It is a joyous season. And the, and the Lord wants us to understand and to know why this season should be and is so joyous to all of us. And I know many of us may be going through situations. We may go, we, A lot of us don't have the loved ones that we had uh, last year or may not have the finances to get presents or whatever. But that's not the reason for the season. It is a joyous season and a joyous occasion once we really and truly understand why we are celebrating it. And the enemy is out there trying to invoke um, depression upon people because they may not be able to celebrate the way they used to or the way they see other people celebrating. But that's because we have lost the perspective, have lost the vision of what this season is all about. So we want to open up in prayer, and we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to just guide us today and to let us understand why we should be celebrating, why we should be rejoicing, Do not only during this time of the year, but all year long, because Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. Father, I just come before you in the name of your mighty son, Jesus, thanking you for him. Thanking you, Father, for just sending him, Father, to redeem us, to save us, to draw us back unto you. Lord, I ask that even now that I, as I speak to your people, that you will use me as a vessel, God, that you would use my lips, oh God, that you would use the, my mouth, oh God. Every word that come forth out of my mouth, oh God, let it be seasoned, ordained, and anointed by your spirit, oh God. Let it quench the hearts of your people and let it just die deep into the souls of your people, Lord, and and and, and cause them to desire and, and create a hunger and a thirst for you like no, like never ever before. Not a word that come forth today shall fall to the ground, but every word, Father, that you speak to your people shall produce after its own kind, which is you. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, as I said earlier, we're talking about, we're going to talk about the reason for this season, Christmas, Christmas. There's a reason why Christ is in there, and I'm not taking Christ out of Christmas or putting Xmas or happy holidays because Jesus Christ is the reason for this joyous season. So today we're going to talk about why did, why did Christ come? Why was Jesus born? Because it's so easy for us to get caught up in the festivities and the activities and and everything that's going on in this season and in the world and lose focus of why we're celebrating, to lose focus of why we're preparing a a big holiday dinner, to lose focus of why we're um, going out and buying gifts and why is that? Why for some reason during this season we have that extra love and compassion and and concern for others, and we want to give to those who do not have. Why are we doing all of that? And it's so easy to forget the purpose and the reason, because Christ, Jesus Christ, is the reason for the season. And we're going to start our we're going to start our um, studies today in the book of Isaiah, chapter seven, and then we're going to go over to Matthew because we're going to dive and take a look at the prophecy that our Lord God gave Isaiah concerning the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. And this begins in chapter in Isaiah chapter 7, and we're going to pick up at verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a virgin, shall give you a sign. Be- I'm sorry, shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel 
or Emmanuel, however you want to pronounce it, meaning God is with us. God is with us. And little did Isaiah know exactly what that meant. Emmanuel means God is with us. Let's turn over to Matthew chapter 1 in the New Testament. Jesus, God prophesied that he was going to give us, that he was going to give us a savior. Right here, he's letting us know that he's going to give us a savior that's going to save his people from his sin. And we see in, as we go into the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, where God fulfilled this prophecy. Let's go to Matthew chapter one. Oh, Jesus, excuse me. We're going to see the fulfillment of God's prophecy regarding Emmanuel. God is with us. And what does that really mean to me and you today? Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to pick up, let me see here. We're going to pick up in verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call, call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now verse 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. God with us. That is powerful and that is profound. Because all throughout the Old Testament, as we had talked about in previous broadcasts, where God did not indwell his people, but God, he... Uh, he came up on his people during certain times at certain se at certain seasons during uh, Pacific tasks or um, heroic um, to, to to help them succeed or in certain Pacific tasks during the Old Testament. He never indwelled within his people. So when we see Emmanuel, God is with us. God had a plan that he had foreordained, before, that he had planned before the foundation, that he had preordained, I'm sorry, I'm getting so excited here just thinking about what we really have within us, that he had preordained before the foundation of the world, that he was going to make a way so that he can indwell in his people and be with his people forever. It would no longer be where he would have to just ascend upon them for a certain time and then leave. Because see, in the Old Testament, as we talked about in previous uh, broadcasts, God could not dwell within people because their nature was dirty and corrupt and defiled because of the fall of Adam and Eve. It all goes back to the garden with Adam and Eve. But God, in his infinite wisdom and knowledge had preordained a plan to reconnect and to restore and to redeem us back unto himself. And that was through his son, Jesus Christ. So when we're celebrating this season, we, we cannot lose sight and lose focus. Had Christ not came, we would be forever alienated or separated eternally from our father. So we're going to, we're going to go over, we're going to go over a couple of scripture. I mean, a couple um, reasons as to maybe three to four, maybe five, depending on the time and how the Holy spirit leads as to why Jesus was born. God want us to know exactly what the birth of his son gave us the benefits so that we can walk in that knowledge and that understanding and have and live victorious, not only during this season, but during every season of our life. Because we know the truth as to why Jesus was born. 
The Holy Spirit, as I said, Emmanuel. And I don't want us to forget that. I want you to remember that. Emmanuel, God is with you. God is always with you. If you are a believer, you were sealed. And as I always say, I am being redundant intentionally. If you are a believer, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. So God is always with you. Emmanuel is always with you. So let's talk about why was Jesus born? Number one, and we're going to start, we're going to go over to uh, 1 John chapter 3. Jesus was born to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus was born to destroy the works of the devil. Why did he have to destroy the works of the devil? He had to destroy the works of the devil because of the fall of Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And because they disobeyed God, we man, the nature became corrupt. We, 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 we adopted or we developed a, a sin nature, meaning that we was eternally separated from God. We were enemies to God because of the fall, the disobedience of Adam and Eve. So Jesus had to come to reconnect us, to redeem us, to restore us back to God. And we're going to look at that in uh, 1 John chapter 3. We're going to start on chapter se uh, verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Number 8. This is our key verse. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit a sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. That does not mean when we are born of God that we do not do sin, but we are not, we don't, we do not commit sin. That means that sin no longer has control. Sin no longer can influence us because now we have the righteous seed of God indwelling within us. The sin nature, that's what Jesus came to destroy, the sin nature of man. Because of the fall or disobedience of one man, which was Adam, we adopted that sin nature. So in order to be connected or in order to be made right with God, we had to be born or begotten of the seed of God. And that's how Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And those who believe and accept the free gift that God has offered unto us, which is his son, Jesus Christ, the sacrifice that he made by being born and dying. In other words, Jesus was born to die so that we can be connected back unto God. So those of us who accept that gift, we are born of the spirit of God. That's what that means. You are born of the spirit. And when the centurion asked Jesus, how can you be born again? That's what being born again means. Born of the spirit of God. Your old nature, the Holy Spirit comes in. And, and, and the Holy Spirit comes in and creating you a new spirit, a spirit that is right with God, a spirit that wants to obey God. Our old nature, because of it, because of its sinful nature, automatically is designed or was designed to be disobedient to God. So that's why we do things that are not pleasing unto God, that is not um, of God, that is of the devil, as we just saw here, because of the sin nature. So it's our nature that is regenerated. It is our nature that is, that is renewed. That's why the Bible in Romans tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So it does not, it's not about a list of things that you do and that you don't do. If you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have that, you, you have and you maintain that sin nature that cannot relate or cannot be in, in fellowship with God because God is holy and God is and God is pure and God is not going to indwell in a or should I say God is not going to and that's why in the old test he could not indwell in the um in the in, in our uh biblical heroes because their nature was not renewed. But now through our our Savior Jesus Christ, God has made a way for all of us to voluntarily come to him, 
to be reconnected, to be restored, so that we can have a relationship and a fellowship with him. The renewed nature. That's the number one why Jesus had to be born, to destroy the works of the devil. The second reason that Jesus had to be born was God wanted to reveal his character to humanity. And as we have always discussed, and we have discussed in previous uh, broadcasts, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And God wanted to reveal his nature to humanity. And that's why in the Gospels, when Jesus says, when he tells his disciples, when you see me, you have seen the Father. When we read and we see the nature, the characteristics of Jesus, we see the nature and the characteristics of our of our creator. That's why it's so important as we are born again, as we just said, the first reason, that we reflect the character and the nature of God. By us now being born again, we now have that ability to reflect to a world that do not know God. They're looking at us. We are the living epistles. They're looking at the they're looking at us to see the character and the nature of God. They're looking at us to see God's goodness. They're looking at us to see God's mercy, his salvation. Um his, his peace, his joy, all of that should be displayed through us as believers. Because when God created Adam and Eve, Adam and, Adam and Eve, and it always go back to the beginning, he created them. He created man in his own image. That means he created man to reflect his nature. Our nature or our, our nature or purpose is to reflect who God is. But when they disobeyed God, they adopted, man adopted the nature or the character of the devil. And we all know that there is no, nothing good in the devil. That's why we have people that are your children. Perfect example. You don't teach your children how to lie. You don't teach your children how to be disobedient. They automatically lie. They automatically be disobedient because that's our sinful nature until we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And then sin no longer has control over us. So number two, Jesus Christ was born to reflect the um, nature or the character of God to the to to humanity because Adam and Eve, the first man, failed at reflecting God's nature to a world that does not know him. But I encourage you, every last one of us who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we now can reflect God's character to a world that do not know him because we have the image. The image of God has been restored back in us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number three, why was Jesus born? Jesus was born so that he can be a mediator, a mediator for a mediator. He's our mediator. He is our high priest. There has there is a mediator between God and man. When Jesus Christ died on that cross, the veil that separated man from God was torn. That means that now we can now come to the throne to obtain grace, to obtain mercy, to talk to God. We <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, I get excited. We have that privilege now to have a relationship. We have a privilege now to talk to God. In the Old Testament, most of us may recall in the Old Testament, the priest had that job to be the uh, mediator between God and sinful man. And they will go in and they will make and they will make atonement for the people, um, for the people, for the people, for the people. Now we don't need that. And the atonement, as we all know in the Old Testament, was the killing of the, of the lambs, the, the, I'm sorry, the ghosts, the animals, um, to, it, it, to um, make atonement for the people. But now we don't, we, don't, we don't need that. We have Jesus Christ. Jesus is our mediator now. Jesus is the one that stands between us and, and, and God. Jesus is the one that has made it possible for you and God, for, for, for you and I to have a relationship with God. He is our high priest. He is the sacrifice, the final sacrifice. There is no more need to kill goats and lambs and animals and doves or whatever. There is no more need for animal sacrifice. There is no more need to shed the blood of the animals to um, 
Cover, that doesn't say to cover, because that's what it did. It, not, it did not remove, it covered the sins for the people for a year, and then they had to do it every year. But Jesus Christ is the final sacrifice, and there is no more sacrifice. So now you and I, when we accept him, we can come to the throne and we can talk to God. We can ask for forgiveness on our own. We don't need nobody else to go in to stand in the gap for us. God made a way for you. When you fall short of the glory of God, when you sin, don't stay in it. Repent immediately and go to, and ask God for forgiveness because Jesus Christ paid the price for your sins. He paid the price for my sins. So when we go, when we fall short and we do something that is displeasing to God, just go to Christ. Go, just go, go to him and ask for forgiveness because he is just and he is faithful to forgive us of all unrighteousness. That's another reason why Jesus Christ had to be born because we needed a mediator to stand between us and God. God is holy, and that's one thing that we must always remember, that our God is a holy God. He is pure. He is righteous. He is perfect. There is no evil, and there is no sin in him at all. And that's why he cannot look up on the, look up on the sins of the sinful man. That's why we need Jesus Christ to be our mediator because when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, when God see you, when God see me, he sees the blood of his son. He does not see our sinful nature. That's why we need Jesus. He is our high priest. He makes intercession for us. He goes before the Lord and he intercedes. When, when you do something bad, when I do something bad and we ask God to forgive us and Jesus right there, he said, I Look, Father, look at, the, look at my hands, look at my feet. I paid the price. I paid the price for their sins. I paid the price. The price has been paid. That's another reason why Jesus Christ had to be born, so that we can have a high priest, a mediator, to stand in the gap for you and I. We don't need nobody else. You got Jesus. Another reason why Jesus was born for God to make his spirit available to all mankind. For God to make his spirit available to all mankind. That is the purpose and the meaning and the uh, for this season, the reason for this season. So that God can make his spirit available to all humanity. Emmanuel. Emmanuel is with us. God, God is with us. That's what that means. God is with us through the Holy Spirit. Each and every one of us who has accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior has been sealed with his spirit. Emmanuel is with you. God has made his spirit available to all humanity. And the only way that he could have done that is through the birth and the subsequent death of his son, Jesus Christ. And because Jesus Christ has come, was born to die for our sins, for the sins of his people, to reconcile us back unto God. And when he died, he was buried, and then he was resurrected, and then he ascended up to the Father. And that was the only way that his spirit can be poured out and released unto all humanity. That's how you and I have Emmanuel with us all the time. So when God prophesied in Isaiah 7 that a virgin was going to have a child and that there is to, and he, his name was to be Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us all the time. Little did the prophet really understand what that really actually met. God is with us all the time. So no matter what you're going through this season or any season of your life, remember, Emmanuel, God is with you all the time. No matter what, in your darkest hours, no matter how dark things may look, no matter how bad things may look, no matter what you are up against, it may look impossible to get out in your natural eyes, but God wants you to remember that God is with 
you. That was prophesied over 5,000 years ago. We see that God brought it. We, we see that God fulfilled that testimony, that, that prophecy in, Matt, in Matthew with the uh, virgin birth with Mary and Joseph. God is with you. Jesus was born so that he can redeem us. He is our redeemer. He was born because he had to pay the price. Somebody had to pay the price of sin. You could not pay that price. I could not pay that price because neither one of us have pure, uh, perfect, holy blood. But it was the blood of Jesus Christ, who is God, that was manifested in the flesh that came down to dwell among his people, to save his people from their sins, to destroy the works of the devil. Because of the fall of man, Adam gave up. He gave up He gave up his dominion. He gave up his authority. He gave up his power. And he gave up the right to have fellowship, to have fellowship, to be in a relationship with God. Because of that sinful nature, because of that disobedience that separated not only him, but for every generation born after him, which include you, which include myself. But God is so wise. God is so knowledgeable. God is so loving. Because he loved you, because he loved me so much. He preordained, he pre-saw this, he, pre- he knew this ahead of times, and he made a way so that his people can be reconnected back unto himself, and that is through the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that is why we are celebrating this season. That's why we're happy. That's why we're joyful. That's why this season should be a season of peace. Not a season of chaos, not a season of confusion, what the enemy would try to make it. Because this is the most joyful and happiest time on earth. Because a savior, a savior, God said, understand what that means. A savior was born to save us. I don't know about you, but I just get excited just thinking about that. Out of Bethlehem, straight out of Bethlehem, came my savior, came my redeemer. So as you go through this holiday season, believers, know that God is with you. He's with you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you see, no matter how you feel, he is with you. If you, if you do not know God as your Lord and Savior today, then obviously Emmanuel, is, God is with us. He's not with you. But that does not mean that he cannot be with you because Jesus Christ was sent for the sins of the entire world. All you have to do is open up your heart and accept him. God is not going to force himself upon you. So if you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you want Emmanuel, God, to be with you forever, always, I encourage you to repeat this, these words after me. Father, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have a sinful nature. But I I acknowledge that you sent your son Jesus during this time, this season, to die for me, to be born, and to die for my sins. He shed his blood, and you rose him on the third day. I believe that, and I ask you to come into my life to sit on the throne of my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I accept the completed work at Calvary. I ask your Holy Spirit to come within me and to dwell with me and to be with me. I open up my heart to you in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer and you meant it, you are now a child of God. But I encourage you to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to disciple you. Find yourself a good word teaching church. Surrender yourself or surround yourself with uh, like-minded believers. Continue to pray and read your word. And know that God is with you because the moment you open up your heart and ask him to come in, you were sealed with his Holy Spirit. Now you have God with you no matter what, wherever you go. God bless you all. Have a blessed uh, a blessed week. Merry Christmas. And know that God is with all, with all of you. In Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>